On Agenda this week, we hear from Douglas Housing Manager Marie Bertels, another LegCo hopeful. Why does she want the role and does she have what it takes to be an effective member of the Legislative Council? This is the ninth candidate we'll have heard from and each one brings their own unique qualities to the contest. The successful candidates will play a significant role in shaping the future of our island, so even though you don't get to choose them, it's good to know who they are. Is your future safe in their hands? Marie Bertels, tell us a bit about your background and why are you standing? OK, I'll, I'll start with a little bit about my background and where I've come from, where I've got to where I am now, uh, and then move on to, to why I'm, I'm putting myself forward. So I was born in South Yorkshire in a small mining town, um, attended a local school and left school at 17 after completing my GCSEs. Uh, and I shortly afterwards started a youth training scheme where I worked doing general office admin. Um, there wasn't, at that time, there wasn't much employment, permanent employment in the area. So at 18, decided that I would move to London, where I spent 15 years. Um, when I got there, um, I soon found, secured a job where I worked uh, in the health service uh, on a psychiatric ward for elderly people. Um, it was a very rewarding job. Uh, I became very much an advocate of the individuals uh, and I remained there for about two years and when I left that position I went to take up one again in care but a different setting, residential care. Um, it was run by the Royal National Institute for the Deaf uh, and it was a permanent home for men that had additional needs. Um, so again I picked up lots of new skills there, I learned sign language, again became a great advocate taking people out on appointments, help training them to cook and live independent. It was a really, you know, diverse job. There were lots of things to do. Whilst I was working there, I was fortunate uh, to be able to take so some additional qualifications. So I did training in city and guilds in community care and management care for care. Uh, and I also completed a sign language course which again was uh, was quite challenging. I remained in this post for five years and whilst in the position I, I taught basic sign language to some um, some um, special needs trainers for a social service workshop. Um, that again was a really rewarding position. I did that on a, volu a volunteer basis just to help them get along better in their everyday jobs. Uh, and then I was put in a position where I was asked to apply for a permanent job working for that organisation. So um, I started working there as a job coach for people with special needs. So that involved like a systematic approach. I did some training on systematic instruction and then started coaching individuals within workplaces that we'd found out in the community. These were all people with severe learning difficulties. Um, I was only there a little while and they did a restructure and I ended up taking over the post of, of business manager. So I ran the workshop. We had 75 people with severe learning difficulties and 10 job coaches. Uh, and I worked there for four and a half years. It was such a great job, really rewarding. Everybody came out of it with some qualification or, or even a job at the end of it because we worked with local employers. Um, unfortunately, after four and a half years, the uh, funding was withdrawn. So I had to look for alternate uh, employment and I was fortunate to be redeployed to Brent Council who had just opened up a one-stop shop where, which was a place like a hub where everybody could come and they could, any queries that they had in relation to the council came through that. So that opened me up to the sort of different sectors and different departments. Um, and I was there for three years when I decided for personal reasons I wanted to move back to family. So I went back to Yorkshire, uh, rejoined my family with my son who was three at the time um, and took a little break to get settled in and then took up a job with the Department of Work and Pensions as an ad admin officer. 
doing the face-to-face, the people coming in to sign on, customer service type of role and administration. Then after that, I moved to the probation service where I worked uh, as part of the resettlement team. So I worked in all of the Doncaster prisons um, on a one-to-one basis with prisoners pre-release. Uh, and it was helping with everything from getting them out on license to do work experience, medical appointments, setting up housing for them, doing a little bit of work on CVs and that type of thing. Um, and then in November 2003, I decided that I would move to the island where I've been since. Uh, I came uh, thinking, well, I'll come and give it a try and see what it's like and actually fell in love with, with the island. Uh, so since I've I've been here, I've spent um, nine almost nine years in um, the finance sector, and then I moved into housing, where I've been now as part of the management team for Douglas Borough Council uh, for the past nine and a half years. Um, that's opened me up to to see and to come in contact with a lot of people that are in crisis. And that's all types of crisis. That's not just housing crisis. That's the financial crisis. You know, that's addiction. Um, I, and I've I've been working with these people on a day to day basis, and that's what's made me feel that now's the time for me to to move forward and try and help and make things better. Um, so thought it was the you know looking at how they're trying to pull people into the MLC role from different backgrounds. I feel that with the experience that I've got um, and the, all the advocacy work that I've done, now is the ideal time for me to come, to come into, uh, the, put my hat in the arena as such. Um, yeah, so that's what's inspired me to, to, to put myself forward. And, and what, what motivates you politically? Um, it, 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 what what would um, I don't know make you angry or or make you happy in in relation to politics? Um, to make me happy is to make changes. You know, I've I've spent time looking at the the island plan, and I think to to work through that plan in the next well, it would be a five year term, but I know the plans for the next now probably eight to 13 years and to to gradually tick off those tasks and move things forward and make things better and make improvements that would make me really happy and that would really motivate me um i think you come across barriers as i do in my current role and i wouldn't say it made me angry you just i just get frustrated but i just keep powering on and powering on uh in hope to get the job done because I imagine in in your role uh, with uh, Douglas uh, is it City Council it now? Is it is Douglas yeah. City Council um, now. Yes, and, and, yeah. Uh, I imagine that you come into well, obviously you come into contact with councillors, but uh, potentially also uh, MHKs, um, and you will certainly understand the frustrations that exist in in the public service in trying to get things done. Yeah, I do on a day to day basis. I'm in in touch with the councillors. And I get a lot of queries from uh, MHKs about their constituents. Um, and they're varying. It, you know, it, it's anything to do with housing. It could be a repair. It could be that they're waiting for a transfer. Um, and I go back and I'm, I'm always open and honest and transparent. And I think I'm, I'm quite direct. Uh, so I tell people it as it is and try to manage expectations because it's no good as going back just to make people happy. You have to be realistic. Um, and I think that is quite frustrating for, for the MHKs to pass on to the constituents. But I, I, I'm just open and honest and I just say it the way that it is. Because often the, the hardest things uh, to do are the, are the, you know, that will take the longest. I mean, it's an inevitable thing, isn't it? It is, and there's a lot of pe- you know people in need. There's a lot of people out there that are waiting to come into housing. There's a lot of people that need transfers, and you have to prioritize prioritize need. And we do that following policy, and that is a good thing within within their current role that there are policies to follow. Um, so it is black and white. You do have the occasional 
grey area where there's there's something that you have to you have to prioritise. But again, that's in policy because it's housing is all needs led. So the person in the most lead need, regardless of whether that's the person with the most points on the housing waiting list or the person that's got the most support for whether it's medical or health and safety reasons, then you have to balance that up. But I do that. I, I chair the, the meetings for that with the councillors. They make the decision, but I advise and advise on policy, which I think also puts me in a good position for for this role because it's sort of a mini role. I'm scrutinising the policy, you know, I'm scrutinising what the councillors want to say and advising them on policy and the right, the right way to go. So, so then, looking at the role of uh, legislative council, uh, what, what I mean, various candidates have have various views, uh, and uh, the views of the candidates uh, of of the well, the the other ninth now candidate we've heard from, um, are certainly as varied as the views uh, I understand of the members of the House of Keys. There doesn't seem to be any particular clarity as to as to what the role should be. What 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 do you actually think it is? Um, I think it's it's scrutiny, but you know I've also spoken. I've met with majority of the MHKs during this process, and there's been a lot of talk about departments and and you know I would be happy to put myself forward to a department if I felt that what the skills and knowledge that I had would benefit that department. Um, so yeah, I. I mean, there's one department that I would love to get involved with, and that would be government because of my housing experience. But I wouldn't like to limit myself to that because I always think, even though I don't know something about an area, I would look into that. I would research it. I would ask questions. I'm not afraid to go out there and and ask people questions to find out the answers to be able to equip me to do the job. Um, And I always think that a change is a challenge and I love a challenge. And and in relation to that challenge, obviously you will be a, a in legislative council. You're right; it's it's primarily a scrutiny role. But in Tinwald, you are there uh, effectively as a as an equal Tinwald member. In fact, it could be ob- argued initially anyway. Legco has a a, a a stronger role because potentially the eight votes in Legco can beat twenty four votes in in the House of Keys on on the first vote at least. Um, so, as a national politician, um, what, what, how, how vocal do you think you need to be? I do think you need to be vocal. I do think you need to put across your point of view. Um, I also think you need to be able to listen and take on board other people's point of view. Um, I definitely think that that's a strength, you know. But before I was comfortable to put my views forward, I would want to know all the information. I would want to, you know, make sure that I'd had time to look through, to look, to discuss with the MHKs, with the other LEDCO members, um, the issues. And so I'd be like a, somebody that I could chat through things with people and then make up my own decision. Do you think that uh, LEDCO members need to have a, a rigorous understanding of how law works? No, I don't. I don't think don't think they do and I think you can through life experience you can have experience that different things which you can use as part of the process um, and I think over time it's like anything any new role that you step into there's going to be areas that you don't know but it's all about finding those answers doing that research doing that scrutiny to be able to to do the job the best you can I mean I one of my big things is I I get I roll up my sleeves I get stuck in, uh, and I carry on and carry on and and do the task end to end. And in in I mean the the there have been discussions o- over many years now about the uh, whether legislative council should be directly elected by the public or whether it should be elected uh, directly by the House of Keys. Um, do you have a, a view on that? Well, I, you know, like I've said, I've spoken to a lot of the MHKs and I know the MHKs have different feelings as well. And I've, I, I feel that this process is quite vigorous. Um, 
and hopefully they get the right people into those positions. But if it was to change and it was to be reviewed there and go out like the MHKs do for the public to choose, then I don't think that would be a bad thing either. OK. And, and I suppose then the other obvious question is um, why LegCo and why not, uh, you know, if you care about politics, why not put your hat in the ring at the House of Keys uh, general election? Um, I don't think that that I'm equipped to be an MHK. I don't, you know, they do have a very public... They are out in, in the public. They are the face of the government. And I think I'm more of a slightly behind-the-scenes person. I would rather be working behind the scenes getting things done and supporting the MHKs where I could. I mean, if a constituent from anywhere on the island came to me and and asked me a question and asked for help, then obviously I'd be happy to do that. But I would like to do that in conjunction with the MHK for that for that area. And and in terms of that relationship then with the, the Keys, I mean, obviously uh, in law, uh, LegCo has a, a, a sort of a subservient role to uh, the House of Keys, uh, but in as I said again, in in, in Tinwald, uh, you you have a, a much stronger voice. Um, how how much of your role should be about challenging MHKs, and uh, what do you challenge them on? Um, well, I think their reason for making the decisions it depends what it is that that's in, in discussion, what's on the table, you know, to the challengers, but. Um, I think it would be about the reasons that they're making the decisions, the route they're going in, and and why they've chosen that route. And and, and uh, I, I suppose then the the other topical I- uh, issue is um, a number of uh, members of the legislative council have viewed their role as as um, effectively supporting their local MHKs. Do you think that uh, that's how LegCo should work? It, should it, should members of LegCo represent the areas that they live in, or should they um, should they be a, a much broader national uh, role? No, I think it. They should represent the whole island. You know, it should be anybody from any area should be able to to contact any of the LegCo. Okay. Uh, in terms of the the business in, in of the legislative council, um, the, I mean it, it's quite a, a, a lot of um, the work is is going through fairly dry bits of legislation. Um, what what specifically do you think uh, you would be trying to do in relation to that legislation? What what would you be looking for um, in, in in terms of your scrutiny role? Um, I think looking at to make sure that it it makes sense and that it's achievable and that everything's covered that you know if you take for instance the domestic violence um the change in policy there's all the different areas there's looking at the courts looking at the support making sure that if, if people are removed that there's somewhere for them to be housed it's looking at the whole thing it's making sure that every every handle angle has been been covered and do you think you should be there to develop policy at all? Uh, no, I don't. I think that is for the MHKs. That's what they've been uh, nominated to do is for the policy. And I think that uh, my role would be the scrutiny. It wouldn't be the development of policies. I, I mean, if there was a, an area and they felt I could help with that policy... Um, I would be happy for to to listen to what they they had to say and to, if they and have my input, but I don't think I I should be the one that is developing those policies. If somebody came forward with what you felt was a madcap idea, um, and you could see that a, a much better solution uh, was available, how would you go about uh, explaining that to? Um, I'm assuming that the person with the madcap idea here is a member of the House of Keys. How, how would you go go about uh, doing that? Um, I think I w- would sit down and chat to them and tell them what my concerns were and have they thought about maybe doing it a different way? 
and put the options you know give them my give them my thoughts and explain why i thought their idea wasn't such a great idea and try and highlight the pitfalls if elected uh, you, you will have an awful lot of calls on your time um, are, are you ready for for effectively uh, living pretty much all your your life in politics for the next five years yeah i am ready i'm you know i'm fully committed i if i was to be successful then i would be finishing my my current empo- you know employment um and i would be be ready to serve in the position yeah and, and what sort of pressures do you think them there are that are specific to to living in the pu- public care uh, i think you know you've opened yourself up to a lot of bad press um which i i get quite a lot of that in my current role uh so i feel that i'm quite prepared for that because if you're not telling people what they want to hear uh, or if things are not getting done as quicker as quickly as they would like them to be done then there's going to be the negative press um but that to me i wouldn't take personally i don't take it personally now because it, it's not me it's not a personal dig at me it's just that they're not getting what they want as quick as they want or getting the answers that they they want and we're getting towards the end of the program now uh, what would be what what's so special about uh, Marie Bertels compared with the other candidates? What what would be the standout thing uh, that you would say you offer uh, that maybe the others don't? I think I'm not. I don't. I'm not an an eye flying academic. I'm just an hard working individual. Individual that's. I'm open and I'm honest. And I'm very flexible. I'm passionate about what I do, and I put everything into what I do. And I'm in touch with people every day that are in crisis. And I, you know, I'm aware of what's needed to make things better for a lot of people in crisis on the island. And in, you know, you'll be there for five years. Have you got any particular political ambition, anything that you'd hope to have achieved in over that, that five year period? Um, just to make things better, just to improve things. Um, and as long as you know we stick into the island plan, then that's achievable and realistic. And and in terms, well, let's let's go into the island plan very briefly. Then, um, is there anything that stands out for you in in the island plan that you think yes, that's something that's really important to support, or perhaps anything in there that uh, you think mm, I'm not sure I would have done it that way. I think that the housing and making sure we've got um, accessible, affordable, um, quality housing for everybody, uh, regardless of whether that be public sector housing, I think that is great and that's something I would really like to get on board. Uh, I have a few concerns about the attraction of extra people to the island when we haven't got enough housing at the moment for the people that are here. We haven't got enough healthcare you know, I personally waited two years for to get registered with a dentist. So those sort of things, I I think, should maybe slow down a little, and we should focus on getting the, everything in place for the people on the island, and then get attracting people onto the island. That was Ledgeco wannabe Marie Bertels. What do you reckon? A good candidate for your MHKs to choose? Is she likely to make a difference if elected? Let me know your thoughts and views on the programme by contacting philgorn at manxradio.com and get in touch if you have any ideas for future shows. Don't forget this programme is available as a podcast on Manx Radio's website. For now though, I'm Phil Gorn. Guramayu. Thanks for listening. <laughs>